So one of our subscribers asked me this question, why does the allegation alternate method work? So I'm going to answer this question in this video and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa. And if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Now, before I tell you why the allegation alternate method works, I'm going to give a brief overview of three important things that you need to know about the allegation alternate method. And if you need a much more deeper discussion, be sure to check out my other video. I'll put a link in the description and the card should pop up pretty shortly. Now, when you talk about the allegation alternate method, it actually is a method by which you may calculate the number of parts of two or more components when they are to be mixed to prepare a mixture of a desired strength. So strength here actually means concentration. So the number of parts of the components that you calculate gives you a final proportion and that proportion permits or allows you to translate those relative parts into any specific denomination. So what that means is once you know the parts of each component and you know the total quantity of preparation that you need to make, you can actually calculate the exact amounts that you need to combine. So the next thing that we want to be aware of is that the strength of the mixture must be between the strengths of its components. So what that means is that the concentration or strength of your desired mixture must be stronger than the component with the lowest concentration and should be weaker than the component with the highest concentration. Otherwise, this method doesn't work. So now I'm going to switch screens and then we are going to look at one example in terms of how the allegation alternate method works and then I'll tell you why it actually works the way it does. So let's get right to it. I'm going to start off by solving an example using the allegation alternate method on the left hand side of the screen. And when that's completed on the right hand side, I'm going to demonstrate the mathematical validity of the allegation alternate method. And that will tell us why this method actually works the way it does. So in this example, it says in what proportion should a 70% sorbitol solution and 40% sorbitol solution be mixed to prepare a 50% sorbitol solution? So we can start off by setting up a grid and in the grid, we need to put in the concentrations that we have. So we have a 70% sorbitol solution, which is the higher concentration. So that goes to the top left. And then we have a 40% sorbitol solution, which is the lower concentration and that goes to the bottom left. In the middle, you put your desired concentration, which would be the 50%. And then we do a quick check. Is 50 between 70 and 40? Yes, it is. So we can use this method. Now, the next thing that we do is we take the 40, which is the lower concentration, and subtract that from the 50, which is your desired concentration. And we get 10. So 50 minus 40 is 10. And we put that on the top right-hand side. So this 10 actually refers to the number of parts of the 70% sorbitol solution. The next thing that we do is we take the 50, which is the concentration of the desired mixture. We subtract that from the 70, which is the higher concentration of sorbitol solution that we are using. So 70 minus 50 gives us 20. That goes into the bottom right. And the 20 is the number of parts of the 40% solution. So using the number of parts of the 70% solution, which is 10, and the number of parts of the 40% solution, which is 20, we can determine the proportion in which the 70% sorbitol solution and the 40% sorbitol solution should be mixed. And so what we will say is we will have parts of 70% sorbitol solution divided by the parts of the 
subital solution. And that's going to be equal to 10 divided by 20. So the zeros can cancel out and you actually end up with 1 over 2. And so the proportion of 70% to 40% is going to be 1 is to 2. So now let's find out why the allegation alternate method works. And we can do that by using this general example. So here the question is saying in what proportion should A% percent solution and B% percent solution be mixed to prepare C% percent solution. So let's start off by setting up a grid. So we have three columns essentially. To the very left will be the percentage given. In the middle column actually will be the desired concentration or the desired strength and on the right hand side will be the parts of each solution. So in the top left we'll have A for A percent and then in the bottom left we'll have B for B percent which is the lower strength solution and in the middle column right here in the middle you have C. But let's say we wanted to know the parts of A to take, which we don't know yet, so we call that X. And then we want to find out the parts of B, which we needed, and we'll call that Y. So we have two variables. Then what it means is we could actually say algebraically that A times X plus B times Y should be equal to the desired, which is C, times x plus y. So you can go ahead and say that your a x plus b y, you distribute the c over the x plus y, so that will give you c x plus c y. You could rearrange the equation and have a x minus c x equals c y minus b y, and then you could factor out the x on the left hand side so x will be a minus c and then you can factor out the y on the right hand side which will be y equals c minus b and then you can divide both sides by y and then you can divide both sides by a minus c And so this will cancel out and that will cancel out. So you end up with your proportion or ratio of X over Y being equal to C minus B divided by A minus C. And so there you have it. Anytime you want to find the proportion in which two solutions with different concentrations should be mixed to give you the concentration of your desired mixture you simply subtract the concentration of the with the lowest strength from the desired and then you divide the value by the difference between the higher concentration and that of your desired it always works so i hope you found this tutorial useful if you did be sure to like it and share it if you have any questions put them in the comments and i'll answer them as soon as i see them if you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and more, then don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.